Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before I begin, please hit the thumbs up button down below to show your support. Thank you. Narcissist Revenge Signs you are in danger. You may have disapproved of something the narcissist said or did, and you may not have said anything to them, but they're always scanning their environment for threats. They read into people's body language, tone of voice, and facial expressions so that they can always be two steps ahead. Because they're terrified of rejection, abandonment, and exposure, so you may not have liked something about them, and unknowingly to you, they were fully aware of it. Or maybe you confronted them on something and they didn't like it. But if they're a covert narcissist, they may not have openly came out and told you that they were angry or upset. Instead, they will bottle it up. They will keep it to themselves. They will repress and conceal their feelings instead of openly expressing it. And it's because they're cowards. They lack courage. But that doesn't mean that they're going to forgive or forget it. It doesn't mean that they're going to stop blaming you or being angry with you. Or that they're going to move on and stop thinking about it. Because they're very petty and insecure, they focus on things that are of little importance. They turn molehills into mountains. So of course, it doesn't take much to offend or upset them. And when that happens, they will be vengeful. It will cause a narcissistic injury and they will be seeking to harm you in return and they won't be satisfied unless they have completely destroyed you. The problem is that because they're so easily offended, you may not even realize that you have said or done something wrong. And if they're a covert narcissist, they won't even tell you about it or even give you the opportunity to correct it. Because once you've offended a narcissist, there is nothing you can do to correct it. The only thing that will bring them satisfaction is watching you squirm. And even then, no amount of suffering will be enough to fill their void. They will always want more. And what makes it really confusing is when things are happening to you and you don't even realize that it is the narcissist who is behind it. Because they never even confronted you. They never told you that they disapproved of something you said or did, which is how some targets struggle to trace it back to its original source, because as far as they know, they haven't offended anyone. But they will go to great lengths to punish you. They will make a great effort and do extreme things in order to achieve their desired result, because it's that important to them. It's so important that it may often take precedence over other things in their lives. And when they're coming after you, it will look like you have robbed them of something that's rightfully theirs and now they're trying to get it back. Because they view you as an extension of themselves. So they will try to control your appearance, dreams and aspirations so that they align with the image that they are trying to project to the outside world. They won't allow your authentic experiences and individuality to develop, or for you to become a separate person of your own, because then you would no longer be a narcissistic extension and they will be unable to get their emotional needs met. So instead they will seek to minimize and diminish you, or they may just condition approval and praise on you for conforming to how they want you to be and what pleases them. But with narcissists, the punishment always exceeds the alleged crime. 
because they're never satisfied. They never feel complete because they're using you as an external regulator to fill a void that can never be filled. And at times they may be blaming you for something you're not even guilty of, something that they're responsible for. So there may often be nothing you can do to correct it, which is how the punishment can go on for years without any resolve. When a narcissist feels offended, they will go beyond what is normal and appropriate. They will react in a very extreme way and they will always find a way to justify it. They will habitually seek to harm, intimidate and coerce you. And initially you may not recognize it, but at some point you will realize that something has gone wrong for them because they will pile all of these unnecessary duties and responsibilities onto you. They will restrict and contain you. They will treat you in a condescending manner. They will publicly humiliate you. They will insult you and put you down. They will try to isolate you and they will try to turn other people against you. And another thing that is especially common among narcissists is that they will try to target you financially because they don't like your freedom and independence where you're able to do things for yourself and make your own decisions without help or influence from other people. They want you to submit to them. They want to be your only source of influence so that they can run you into the ground because despite what they're displaying to you, they actually feel threatened and intimidated by you. They feel like their false image is in danger and at risk of being damaged or harmed whenever you're around. So they begin to see you as unwanted and undesirable. And then they want to discard you like a piece of garbage. They want to exclude you from a group or place because they do not like or need you. You're showing them up. You're making them feel inadequate. You're unknowingly exposing and discrediting them by revealing their faults to where it brings everything to light. It's clearly seen and it stands out. You're making them feel inadequate and they don't like it. It's making them feel embarrassed and ashamed. So now they want to teach you a lesson. They want to punish and hurt you to act as a disincentive and to, in, to discourage you in the hopes that it will make it less likely that you will show them up again because they really don't like it when you do that. They don't want to deal with reality so they don't want to deal with you because your mere existence is an offense to them. They view it as a crime or wrongdoing and it provokes annoyance, anger and resentment in, in them. Because you may be particularly attractive, wealthy or intelligent, or you may just be a happy and carefree person who doesn't have any worries or responsibilities, but life is not like that for them, which is why they dislike you and want to punish you. They want to overburden you and they want to give you something to worry about so that they don't have to feel like they're alone in their pit of misery. And they will especially hate it if you walk around with an air of pride and self-satisfaction, where you behave with a sense of accomplishment, confidence or superiority. And you're beaming with joy at your success. And you're experiencing feelings of pleasure and satisfaction because you or people connected with you have done or gotten something good. So now you're very pleased with yourself. They really hate that because it's you and not them. And they can't be happy for you or share your feelings of satisfaction 
because they lack empathy. They have an inability to share your experience and they're very insecure. So they don't believe that it can ever be like that for them, which is why they will instantly bully you and try to make you feel unhappy. Narcissists will also use triangulation as a form of punishment and revenge, which is intended to make you feel insecure or to turn someone against you because they're very weak and cowardly people. So they lack courage and confidence in a one-on-one -on -one situation where two people come into direct opposition. They wouldn't know how to deal with that type of situation. They can't stand on their own two feet. So they've got to bring other people into it. They feel more comfortable when they've got other people to support them and take their side because they're very insecure. They lack confidence in their stance and possession, which means that they're not good leaders. And yet they're the ones who are trying to control you. So of course that's not going to turn out well for anyone, but it's intended to punish you and to manipulate and control you. The narcissist will also seek revenge by giving you the silent treatment where they will show a stubborn refusal to talk to you. And they may even completely ignore you as a means of expressing contempt or disapproval, as though you're worthless and beneath their consideration, when in fact they're just angry and upset about something you have said or done. But if you confront them, they will act like nothing is wrong. They will ghost you, they will shut you out of their life, in an attempt to stop themselves from thinking about you. Because when they're communicating with you, they get a reflection of themselves that they don't like. It's making them feel inadequate and they don't like it. And it also acts as a punishment by keeping you uninformed. And by them being so unfriendly or unemotional, it's passive aggression. It's an indirect resistance to your proposals or ideas and avoidance of direct confrontation because again they're very weak and insecure and they lack courage or confidence they feel inadequate in your presence so they shun themselves away but if they feel like that's not going to work or that it's not going to have an effect on you then they will threaten and intimidate you to try to make you feel fearful, to leave you walking on eggshells, to where you become extremely cautious of your words and actions, and you're very careful not to offend or upset them. And you may just tone yourself down. You may soften yourself and become less intense. You may minimize yourself. You may represent yourself as less important than you really are, instead of shining like the light that you are. Because although you may not be consciously aware of it, at some level, you already know that it's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to play yourself down because they're very insecure. They feel inadequate in comparison to you. So they're gonna have you walking on eggshells all the time to where you're struggling to put one foot in front of the other. And you feel like you're walking on broken glass because you're constantly living in fear of them, you never know what they're gonna do next because they're so easily threatened by you. So they're always looking for something that they can use against you. They may pretend like they're with you, but they're only there so that they can get what they want from you. When all else fails, or if it's not as explosive and destructive as they would like it to be. They will go all out on a smear campaign as a means of destroying your reputation and impairing your ability to secure the necessities of life, such as a means of income and support or money that you need to pay for food, clothing and a place to live. And they will also run this campaign to get everyone to abandon you so that you won't have any help or support and you'll be left to deal with it on your own. 
They will spread lies and rumours about you, but not in a way that is done with little effort or care. It will be very organised and precise, and it will be considered very carefully because they're undertaking a task that they consider to be a very important duty. They're on a mission to ruin your life, a systematic course of aggressive activities to take actions that will have serious negative consequences on your relationships, career, reputation, happiness, and personal well-being. And this is really their core purpose. All the while they're pretending to be your friend, or as though they're unconcerned or uninformed. And it's something that they enjoy doing. They find pleasure and amusement in it. It brings them amusement and entertainment. Which is how you will see them deliberately and vigorously engaged in energetic effort to ruin your mood, your day and sometimes even your life. Because it feeds their ego. When they can turn a happy, positive and cheerful person who has a twinkle in their eye and they are hopeful and confident about their future into a nervous and miserable wreck who has so many fears, doubts and insecurities and has given up on their dreams and aspirations and may not even want to live another day on this earth because it's just too overwhelming for them to deal with. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.